Welcome one more time to the house of Dua. Welcome to the channel from which you learn about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, about his creation, about his message, about his messenger, and of course about his chosen religion known as Al-Islam. And welcome to the channel from which you learn about how to succeed in the world we live today and how to return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for accountability on the day of judgment for even greater success. My dear brothers, my dear sisters, today we are beginning our conversation with two ahadiths of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which we consider so meaningful that all of us need to ponder about them. Both ahadith were narrated by Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. Both ahadith are also about a dying person or a dead person. My dear brothers, my dear sisters, we know that the life we live is not permanent. One day, surely, we die and we return back to Allah for accountability. When we die, we transit to what is known as the Akhirah, the eternity, and where we have the opportunity to meet our last one of what I have. We pray that we'll be among those who have the opportunity to cast a glance at Allah's one of what are in Jannah after accountability. My dear brothers, my dear sisters, in the two hadith narrated by Abu Huraira, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the first hadith says, when a person dies, two creatures of Allah's one of what are ask a question each. Those creatures are the angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the human beings that the person is living behind. The angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lament over a dying person and ask the question, what has he or she sent forward that will be of benefit to him or her when he or she meets Allah on the day of accountability? But the family that person lives behind also asks, a question, lamenting over the death, and they ask the question, what has he or she left behind? Which of these two questions do you think is more important? From my own perspective, we should be more concerned about what happens when we leave this planet. We know what we have done here. We know how far we have gone. There are so many things we have done and we have forgotten. But what will happen to us when we meet Allah on the day of accountability is more important than what we do here. Therefore, our question today is, what are you sending forward that will be of benefit to you when you meet Allah on the day of accountability? The other hadith we want to reflect upon is the hadith narrated by Abu Huraira, which states that when a person dies, three things accompany that person to the grave where he's going to be buried, his wealth, his fellow human beings or the family members, and his deeds. After burial, laid into that dark, silent grave. He's left alone there. The wealth and the family members or fellow human beings who escorted him to that grave, they return back home or to dunya. But his deeds remain with him. Good or bad, that is what will remain with him. And it is the nature of those deeds, whether they are good or bad, that will determine how Akira is going to look like for him or her how the day of judgment is going to look for him or her, whether he or she is going to go into Jannah or into Naru Jahannam. We ask Allah to count us among those who will go to Jannah. 
my dear brothers, my dear sisters. That brings us to the question we want to ask today. What is it that you have done, or you are doing now, or will do, that will make your life in the Akira better for you? What are you sending forward right now? This is a very, very important question. Allah did not leave us alone to wonder about this issue. So he has sent down several revelations in the Quran on what we need to do in order for our transition to Akira to be peaceful, loving, successful. He has sent down revelations regarding what we need to do in addition to our believing in him and worshiping him. There are some of us who do not believe in him anyway. There are some of us who do not worship him as well. But that is immaterial at this time. If you like it or not, you will go back to Allah after your stay on this planet. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in his infinite wisdom and love for us, sent down revelations on what we should do in order for our marrying him to be very good for us. The Prophet Allah ta'ala was asked, after believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and worshipping him, what is that next thing that we should do? What is the most important deed that accompanies that? He says, Jihad fi Striving for the sake of Allah. Struggling to help the cause of Allah. There are two major components of Jihad. There's what we call Jihad bin Nafs. That is, striving against your own self-desires. Desires that lead you to sinfulness. Struggling to curtail them, to eliminate them. As a matter of fact, your total transformation or purification. The other aspect of that is striving all the time to establish a link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To do those things that will please him so that he will love you and you will be happy with him when you meet him on the day of accountability. In Surah al maida verse 35, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya hayu ala zina amano tokula tokula waptago ile hili wasila Oh, you I believe. Be conscious of Allah's ban on what Allah and seek the means by which you reach out to Him to please Him so that you'll be among those who are successful when you meet Him on the day of accountability. The other aspect of jihad is jihad fi sabili la. Several verses of the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Strive, Fisabilillah, Fisabilillah, Fisabilillah. That involves using your money, your sweat, your energy, your expertise, your time to help advance the cause of Allah, to support the cause of Allah, to help the deen of Islam, the preferred deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in addition to that, to take that extra step that will make you beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, including, but not limited to, going out to fight to defend Islam if the need arises. In other words, surrendering your life to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if that becomes necessary. My dear brothers, my dear sisters, whenever we talk about jihad, many of us have misrepresentation, or we start to freak out. Jihad does not call for killing or fighting, except a little portion of it, which is to defend Islam when you are attacked. That's where fighting comes into it. But other than that, jihad means striving to make yourself better, striving to help the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my dear brothers and dear sisters. In this connection, we are bringing to you the last verse of Surah al hajj chapter 22 of the Holy Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says,
wa ni'ma nasir wa ni'ma ni'ma la wa ni'ma nasir strive in the way of Allah strive to help the cause of Allah strive to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with your word with your time with your expertise with your energy strive Strive in a manner that is due to our last one or water. He is Allah who has chosen you, who has selected you, who has named you Muslims. Strive in the same way that Ibrahim alayhi salam strove in the course of Allah. I mean, let her be to Ibrahim. This is the tradition of Ibrahim. This is the pathway of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Strive to please the last one or water Allah. Do good deeds that will please the last one or water Allah. Allah has not made this thing a hardship for you. No. His desire is to make life easy for you in this world and the other. Therefore, strive to please Allah's one or time. Because on the day of accountability, Allah's one or other, we call on Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam to testify about you that he actually delivered the message to all of you. And you, in turn, will be made to testify against those who disbelieve that the message actually got to all of us. Strive so that Allah's ban of water will be happy with you. He is your protector. What an excellent protector. And he is the disposer of your own affairs. What an excellent disposer of our own affairs. My dear brothers, my dear sister, it cannot be better than this. Allah's ban of water wants you to strive to do good deeds that will make your life after death better for you than it is now. Remember that this idea of striving is a responsibility that Allah has imposed upon us as those who believe in him. Earlier generations that came, the same thing happened to them. But there are a group of people who were given the same responsibility, but they declined it, the Jews and the Christians. And that's why what Allah said, we are sending the message to them. But they reject it. They refuse to accept the responsibility. As a result of that, in Surah Fatr, Allah says, Allah says, Allah's ban of what Allah says, when they rejected it, Allah assigned it to those he has chosen, you and I, to bear the message, to spread it, to help the cause of Allah's ban of what Allah. And among those to whom the message has been given are those who still wrong themselves, who are not doing enough, who are falling short. Among us, there are people like that. And there are among us those who are just at the middle, just making the minimal effort. Whereas among us are those who are actually at the forefront. The foremost among them. Such people, Allah's banner, what Allah says. All of them, no matter what the case is, they are still better than those who came before. And they will be given Jannah. Jannah in which rivers flow. Where they will be given ornamented bracelets to wear. And they will be happy. They will wear silk dress. And when they see the jana, they will declare, Come to the light, let's see, as I have an answer. All praises for Allah who has saved us from sorrows of the Akhira. In Arabban Allah, the Furu Shokun, Allah is actually all forgiven and all praiseworthy. He has made it easy for us to enter Jannah. Why am I so now? Fiha Nasabun. In Jannah, there is no Nasab, there is no adversity, there is no affliction. And when you are there, there is no tiredness, there is no fatigue, there is no sorrow. We ask Allah's one water to grant it to us. My dear brothers, my dear sisters, when you are being told about this today, you start freaking out. You start freaking out. 
Allah has promised a great reward for us to do this that will please him when we meet him on the day of accountability. It is for your own interest. So let us try as much as possible to do it. Why should we be freaking out? Be among those who are at the forefront. Take a look at your surrounding, your community, your massage it. What role can you play? Somebody woke up this morning to open the masjid. Somebody woke up this morning to test whether the water is flowing, whether the air is good, whether the mat is properly clean. Somebody woke up to call the azan. What about you? What are you doing? What are you sending forward? What extra step are you taking to meet Allah on the day of accountability? This is very important. Why is it therefore when you hear Haya la swala? At the minimum, you're supposed to get up to go and pray, but to feel sluggish. You are responding to the drummings of the shaitan. Play long, tawe long, for good. The night is still far. Keep on sleeping. Shaitan is deceiving you. And you're not aware of that. My dear brothers, my dear sisters, let us be among those who are at the forefront. Sabiku pil khaira. Those who are at the forefront striving for the way of Allah. This is very important. And when it comes to striving in the way of Allah, Consider what those who were in the time of the prophet went through. Apart from the inner caucus of the prophet made up of Sayyidina Abu Bakr, Sayyidina Umar, Sayyidina Uthman, Sayyidina Ali, Radi Allah, and Umar Ajmain, there were other Sahabas that were subjected to all forms of torture and indignation in addition to their belief. Why? Because they believe in the message of Allah and they follow the example of the messenger. That's why they were subjected to torture. Nowadays, that torture is no longer here. Nobody is threatening you because of your religion. And still, you are reluctant to contribute to the way of Allah. It is what you do now that will determine whether your life in the Akira will be a everlasting happy life or a everlasting sad life. You ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us from that. Let's take a look at the example of those who suffered because they wanted us to have this thing the way we have it today. Consider the case of Amar bin Yasin and his mother, Sumeya, the first woman to die as a martyr in Islam. Consider the case of Bilal bin Rabah al-Habashi, the only black person among the inner caucus of the Holy Prophet Muhammad. Consider the case of Suheb bin Sunam Arumi, the only European in the inner caucus of the Holy Prophet Muhammad. And consider the case of Samal al-Farisi, the only Persian in the inner caucus of the Holy Prophet Muhammad. What about Khabbab bin Aret? Who was an Arab? Consider the cases of these people who suffered for the sake of Allah just because they want to send something forward that will be of benefit to them. We cannot go through the whole of them, but let's consider the case of Suhaib bin Sinam a Rome. He was from Rome. He lived in Makkah. He was poor initially, but he made a lot of wealth. And when the Prophet was granted the opportunity to migrate to Medina, Suhaib bin Sinam Arumi decided to also migrate to Medina. To join the Prophet, to make the sacrifice we are calling upon you to make now. But the Mushrikun of Makkah intercepted him. They ambushed him and told him, no, you are not leaving. You exploited our city to make money. Now you are going to Medina to spend the money there. No, you were poor when you came here and you cannot live with the word that you made here. We either kill you or you remain with us. So even Sinama Rome told them, you know I'm an archer. I'm a powerful archer. If I want to fight, I will fight. But let's have a deal. Let me give you all the wealth that I made in Makkah. Then let me go and join Muhammad. Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam in Medin. Abdullah Khalid wa The people of Makkah who loved wealth so much, they told him, give it to us. Go and show it to us where you have all the wealth. We will let you go to Medin. And he did. And he went to Medina to join the Prophet. As a result of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed a powerful verse in Surah Al-Baqarah. Among them, among mankind, was one who had to mortgage his own life, who had to give up everything that he had in order to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah is so merciful to those of his slaves who truly and sincerely worship him. This ayah was in connection with Suhaib Sinan Aron. 
my dear brothers, my dear sisters. Let's try and be like these companions. Let's try and be like this cream de la cream of Islam. Let's try and do our best so that this world will be good for us, the Akhirah will be good for us. Don't get scared when you are told to help the cause of Allah. The worst of it all nowadays is that you are not doing anything and you are not even giving thanks to those who have done something. The Prophet Allah was, was told by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on how to honor these people who strove in the words of Allah. The prophet was told, when you see these poor people in Makkah who have sacrificed their life for the sake of Allah, Bilabin Rabbah, Amabin Yasi, Suhebin Sunam Arumi, Kababin Aret, Saman al Farisi, when you see them coming towards you, Yam Homo, you should be the first person to get up to tell them, Assalamu alaikum. In other words, they may be mean in the face of human beings. They may be very little, insignificant in the face of human beings, but in the face of Allah, they are great. You must greet them first. And the Prophet was always honoring them. That reminds us that we also need to give honor to those who are serving you. Whether it is the Imam that comes to lead you in Salat, whether it is the Khatib that came to give you goodbye in the Masjid, whoever it is, whether it's the person who opened the door this morning, or the person who provided the water for us to do ablution, or the person who directed traffic while we are going out, we need to honor them. That's what it reminds us about. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to count us among those who do good. Make life easy for us in this world and make the hereafter better for us. Abanata Brahmina in a canta semen or to go away and I am Alana in a canta and a full and carins. One of I will be amdi, one of Kalama, be amdi, a shadow lay lay lant and I say foot on a to go back and be.